Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? Um, I am busy finishing up with the patterns for my little whale scrimshaw designs. Um, I have these cute whale surfaces that are two-piece, like most of my self-framing things. And um, Peggy Harris suggested I do some scrimshaw designs on it. And I thought that'd be a cool idea. So I looked at a lot of things and came up with a couple things. And I wanted to show you all three sizes together first because a lot of people don't realize they're different sizes because I take a lot of close-up pictures. And these are the ornament size. There's a the little hermit crab and the turtle and a jellyfish. And the three small ones will be in one pattern that I'm working on. This is a medium size. This is a size that I did the Santa from Lynn Andrews on. And I put a mermaid on this. And it, it has a stand that's optional. You could either hang it as a plaque. I, I give a hanger when I sell the surface. Or you could put it up on a stand. I made like a universal stand. And that's a medium. The stand is separate so you don't have to buy it if you want to hang it or do whatever. And this is a large whale, and he's kind of in progress. I finally finished my drawings last night, and I started painting him. And this is a very, like a sketchy scrimshaw style of painting. And for doing it, I used this nice brush that I just got from Mary um, Ghibli Isco. I can't pronounce her name it all the time. It's a 30-0 Royal Majestic um, monogram brush and it's got a very fine little tip and it holds a lot of paint and it does it's very good control and it's very easy to do this style. It looks hard, it looks detailed, but that's why I thought I'd do a video. I'm going to do one of the arms of the octopus and show you just how easy it is. And then you'll be able to do it. You don't have to even have a steady hand. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to set up for painting. And I will be right back. Alright, we're just about getting ready to paint. And I thought I'd show you my palette set up. Because a lot of people ask. I use a small Masterson's wet palette. Which means there's a piece of paper over a little brush. Um, sponge, excuse me, that is wet and it helps keep acrylic paint wet longer. It really does help. Um, I use it all the time now. I used to use the bubble palette but this really works better and I use a, a small water. This is what I call my little water on the top for when I float or use it with um, shading and things like that. I like to keep this a cleaner water and the water that I rinse the brushes out is a big, bigger base, and it's off camera. So that way you always have clean water when you're floating or thinning your paint down and whatever. And I just put a little bit of paint on the palette and some, add some water till it's inky. I don't want it too thin where it's going to be transparent and runny, but I, don't, I want it to move around too. So I, I load up the brush pretty fully and kind of just drag it. So that's kind of a simple thing. I'm going to move this out of the way so I could use it without you having to watch that part. And here's our piece. And um, I'm doing mine on the whale that I cut. They're, they're beveled edges two piece and they kind of frame themselves they're called self framing and by cutting this inner piece on a bevel what it allows you to do is it's it pushes back slightly and it gives the piece a little more dimension you can see on the back it sticks out and at the end of the process you glue it into place i usually do that last after even the um the varnish is on and then when I paint the back of my piece, um, you could touch up this edge back here. Okay, so, so far when I painted, 
Um, there's a little entry hole too here that I had a drill in order to cut and you could fill that before you do your final thing and touch it up. Um, I did most of the piece where it was outside of the big whale piece but what I decided to show you is I'm going to do this arm here because it's going to go over the over the edge so I thought that would give you a little bit of help with that too because it can be confusing I mean it's not too bad and really we're going to be shading around this lip anyway so I mean it doesn't have to be perfect but um, I thought I'd show you anyway just to, you kind of do it the same with everything so I hope it's not too awkward. It, you know, I'm in a dilemma of wanting to show you the whole piece and, um, you know, not having it um, fill up the whole frame of it. And I want to get close enough so you can see me do the, the painting itself. So we'll just start. And a lot of people, they ask if they can use a pen with this style. And of course they can, but I've never been successful with pens, and I just don't like using them. I like using brushes. I like painting. So I decide that I just practice. And this is a really good piece to practice on because you really don't want a perfect line. When I posted this online last night, I was showing my progress, and I like doing that because you see that you're painting in a different perspective. And I noticed this line here and that tentacle is too perfect. See, it's too straight, and it looks out of place. It looks too on purpose. See how this one's a little bit ragged? So what I'm going to do first before I even start is kind of break it up a little. Maybe pull that down. I'm going to be turning my piece a lot, especially for that. And I want to make it look not quite as perfect. Because if you see a creature like this, God forbid, but I'm, it's not going to be perfectly straight and smooth and Sometimes it doesn't take a lot to make it look realistic, just one or two little mishaps or whatever. So, I mean, I think that looks better. Your eye isn't drawn to it as much. And I'm going to lock this in place, if I can put my brush down, so I don't keep dropping it. The bigger pieces tend to want to wobble. You have to get them in kind of straight. So, okay. I'm going to start with the tentacle here. I'm trying to get my orientation for camera, so please, please forgive me for um, switching around. And what, what I do with this is just kind of drag it. This is a leg that's going to go around this way and curl, okay? So we're starting in here, I'm looking at my reference photo, just to make sure I have the right leg. And then this is the top of it, it's going to kind of go through here. I didn't have my line there. And what I do the first thing is to get the main main shape of it. Now see, I don't have to go perfectly even on it. You don't have to do it in one swoop. When you get to the edge, just kind of bring it down and connect the dots. And we'll bring this little loop around. This is where it curls around. And you could see that the paint isn't as dark in some areas because it's watered down a little, which is fine because you want it to look sketchy. I mean, when the scrimshaw pieces are carved in whalebone, 
they're scratched in. And then what happens is they add, apply ink and wipe it, and that's what gives it that antique -y look. Um, plus they're old, but I mean, um, so they, they're not solid, straight, perfect lines. There's a lot of little scratchy lines. I assimilate it to like newsprint. It's kind of like newsprint in that, you know, it, it's, it's dots more than anything. So I'm going to have some tentacles or some um, the suction cups here under the arm. And for all these suction cups, I didn't draw and transfer all the lines. I just left the, started with straight lines like this. And I really encourage you to do that. I'll have really good pictures in the pattern for you. I'm hoping you can see that. And then I just added in little curves under here. And then this is going to be your shading, where they cross over, and this gets shaded, this little area, because, and you don't need a lot of shading and stuff, you know, that's the thing, it's really... Like here, you just do a little bit where the head is. It's like I showed in the other video. You kind of just dance the brush across. Very light little strokes. And see, I like, I like this brush because it holds a lot. And you could kind of tell, like, you don't want to start in the middle right after you load. You go to a darker area. And then as the brush loses... It's, um, as it runs out of paint, then you move to your areas where you just want a little bit of lighter shading. Like here, we'll put some in there. It needs more back here, I think. And let's continue this leg around. We'll see how this goes. Now there won't be any tentacles up here because they're kind of on the side we're not looking at and they're crossing over in the back and then they're going to come out on this side or any, I, I call them tentacles, they were um, the suction cups, excuse me. So I'll start making the rows here and then as it turns around then they're going to be to the front of us again. And see, it doesn't matter that that line is there. It'll kind of get covered in as we, as we keep painting. And this is going to give the impression of a twist. Now, see, I'm not doing this neat. And if you look at these, they're not, they're not all perfect little circles. And that's why it looks so cool and realistic. So we want to go to the end with this. Sorry about my bracelet making noise. Now this is where it curves in. And I'm going to take it and kind of just follow that along. And we're right on that edge. And I'm going to kind of make it fold. So now the curve is going to go, the suctions are going to go to the back of this little curve here. So we'll just see the little hint of them on the top. I hope you can see that. And then they're going to come out on the bottom here to the end. So they went under in the back and they're around here and then they're coming out and around this way. Now, these are a little bit light, these lines, so we could go over them again. And then you put your just little splotches in between them. Same here, you could see the pink got lighter. And I made a weird angle, so, I mean... 
see how when you look at it closer when you just focus on that one part it's not as perfect as one would think it would have to be I noticed like a lot of people a lot of you guys were intimidated I guess is a good word by seeing the lines for this now what I want to do here to show a bend is extend this little line this will be in your drawings too and put some shadows I'm going to shadow it here this will have you just don't want all this blank space so you kind of bring just little shadow lines to it and you don't want to make them even because it'll look too on purpose you see maybe a little bit of shadow under here because this is coming out from the back but you don't want to overdo either because it's a small piece or a small area and since you're only working with you know um, monochromatic colors it'll be too much now if you as I look back at it this area looks light in here like I said of course you can use a pen for it I'm gonna go over this this is where you get to be kind of artsy and it's fun it's really relaxing when you think about it it's not a stressful thing to do at all look at the other video too where I showed how I um I think it was the hermit crab that I showed okay so I am gonna stop there because I don't want to bore you with a long long video but that is the process that's how I did everything and I will give you drawings in the pattern like I said and you'll get nice close-ups of the finished work too so it'll be easy for you to follow just kind of look and and kind of you could practice on a pencil if you want even on a piece of paper and pencil but don't I'm begging you don't trace all these little lines I think I'm gonna give you two line drawings well, at least the one and then the pictures, because all you really need are the baselines and then the rest is more filling in. Okay, so I hope this helped and um, the pattern should be out by the next week. I don't have them yet. I've had a lot of people ask me. We're doing a site update on Monday. Today is Saturday and I'm going to have a pre-order on them, but they should only be a day or so and then I'll be able to ship everything if you want whales to okay take care thanks again for coming and um, join my page at let's paint with Sheila on Facebook the link will be there okay